So um, this is Elif. Um, I am a medical doctor in origin and I'm a bioethicist and I just landed in Brussels. So I've been flying since 5 a.m. this morning. So I'm still a little bit high. I hope I can <laughs> deliver, my, uh, del uh, deliver my thoughts to you in the best way. So what is this um, speech about? Well, this speech is about data ethics and the ethics of data sharing. So let me start uh, with um, a, a little bit of uh, background story. So uh, the previous year, when we were in International Data Week in Gothenburg, together with Francis, who has been asking questions, I think you are already familiar with him. So uh, when we were there, there were lots of data scientists and two ethicists, Francis and me. I think there were there wasn't anybody else talking about data ethics or open science ethics. And we, when we were discussing about the ethics of open science and data um, sharing, um, data scientists, I mean, the main question of them was, why do we need data ethics when we have the GDPR? Because if we comply with GDPR, we are safe, we are good, then why do we need to think about the ethical aspect of these things? And the next year, Again, the IDV was in, this time in Salzburg, and we had like three sessions there, and the closing session was also dedicated to um, data ethics and the ethics of um, open science. So my point is that um, GDPR or legal legislations, yeah, they, are all, they should be set, they should be there, but however, they are so... Um, so concrete and not flexible enough and cannot be updated very easily. So they are some kind of lacking behind to answer the ethical, moral or um, yeah, ethical questions that arise with the high um, speed of the um, technology. So let me start my um, presentation with... Uh, some wise words from a wise man. Um, Potter is the is known as the um, founder of bioethics, and in his book, which is a ground, which was a groundbreaking book, Bioethics: A Bridge to the Future, he defined dangerous knowledge as uh, knowledge that accumulates more rapidly than the wisdom re required to use it, and he defined bioethics as a bridge between the present, future, nature and culture, science and values, and finally between between humankind and nature. And now we are adding this and technology. So when we're talking about the ethics of AI and uh, open science, first we should have a look at the two properties of um, artificial intelligence, let me say, uh, which, uh, which are the inherent uh, radical innovation capacity and the high diffusion capacity. When I talk about radical innovation capacity, I'm talking about introdu introduction of a new product or process that is inherently different than the existing one. So this technology is about to change everything that we we do and the way we do those things. And when I talk about the diffusion capacity, I mean the um, use of the technology not only in one domain or one sector, like not only in medical sector or not only in um, scientific research or education or military, but it diffuses into many domains um, nearly simultaneously. And uh, what we call as a long wave phenomenon is a new way of doing things that affect the whole system of science and, or, or the entire uh, structure of um, society. So why is AI ethics um, so complex? Or the like, I can also rephrase it as why is uh, open science ethics is so complex? And why can't we apply the existing uh, ethical approaches to AI and just move on? Because we already know that there is a huge discourse of um, technology ethics, which is going all the way back to Plato. The answer to this question lies uh, in the properties or, let me say, features of conventional technology artifacts. And when I talk about conventional technology, I refer to any kind of technology that doesn't have any, any kind of artificial intelligence in that. So conventional technology artifacts, their capabilities and functions are determined and controlled by human beings. The pathways of their operations are, are, and, um, and functions are known by us, and they cannot self-evolve, self-learn, or self-generate. They lack high-level functions which require intention, creativity, and strategy. They need humans to create any consequences, any concrete consequences in the physical world, and, human produce, and humans produce them. And we, we can 
cannot say that all these features are relevant to AI. I mean, in fact, when we talk about, when we think about generative AI, most of these are not relevant. That is why AI is inherently different than the conventional technology, and that is why we need some kind of a new frame for uh, new framework for um, AI ethics. So let's go back to data. As more data is digitalized and made available and um, provided to AI for machine learning or deep learning purposes, its capacity to uh, initiate and urge a set of interconnected radical innovations, you remember what radical innovation was, that affect all levels of society and individual life, business, governments, and so on and so forth. And this enhances. And um, um, with these enhancements, AI um, has a capacity um, to diffuse into new domains of life or dives deeper into the ones that it is already um, uh, diffused into. And this trajectory presents constellations of radical innovations interconnected in several domains of life. So it's getting kind of complicated. And it's, uh, it initiates a, an irreversible paradigm shift in techno-scientific and techno-cultural spheres. And this brings us to social moral change. Let me explain a little bit what, what I mean when I say social moral change. So social moral change is um, the way the, 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 um, the change in society and individuals to understand or um, address uh, moral issues. And it operates in, in different two different um, orders. The first one is First order effects, it is the pragmatic moral mediation. It means technology adds or subtracts morally charged decisions into or from our lives. Uh, for example, generative AI added new questions into scientific publication, research, conduct of research, and, it's, it, and it has huge impact on op open science, which we um, has, have been discussing quite widely. And then there is the hermeneutic moral mediation, which means interpreting and weighing some aspects of the process different than we used to do. For example, AI increased the need for collaboration to understand process use or reuse the data. So these, these first order effects sets a new paradigm, or let, let me say sets a new canvas for us to you know, understand, um, evaluate, and um, act on. Um, and we have to re rethink the existing concepts and values that we used to do. And the second and third order effects, the impact of the third, uh, first order effects on economy, business, or service supply represent the second and third order effects. And we should keep in mind that there is a reciprocal um, interaction between these first and second and third order effects. So they are moving all together. So uh, what Francis and I have been working on is the levels and clusters approach, uh, which is completely emerging from this complexity that I was talking about. Um, when we are talking about ethical issues of um, ethical issues in terms of open science or data science, we realize that there are, there are some levels of data governance which needs different perspectives of ethical approach. For example, in terms of data development levels, like data collection level, if you're, if you're in the medical field, if you're coming from medical background, as I am, um, then you have the responsible conduct of research principles, which are set quite um, concretely. Um, and on top of that, you have responsibility, you, ha you need robustness, you need uh, respect, like rights, values, and existence, and you have to um, think about justice and fairness. Um, in the data sharing level, then there are some other issues, which, which are data ownership, like the effort to, pr uh, to um, collect the data, the person who is doing the actual data collection in the field, um, investments, big data, real-time data, and fair data. And in terms of data storage, some other um, concepts like investment, motivation, and transparency come into the scene. And in terms of policy levels, it can be in local policy level or global policy level. It can be national or institutional. I mean, in terms of local um, policy level, we can have it 
in, in nationwide or institution-wide. Then we go all the way back to institutional review boards or ethical, ethics committees, and we then talk, have to talk about transparency, conflict of interest, and we also have to set the standards for collaboration. And in terms of global policy um, level, which is really hard, uh, but we have to find a way to um, at least come closer to it, is mutual understanding and mutual benefit. And then there is the level of deployment, and it also goes to the clusters that I'm going to talk about. It, uh, it brings uh, in implementation and the concept of vigilance. So, um, so when we're talking about the clusters, I'm talking about domain-specific ethical issues. For example, when we are talking about data ethics or open science ethics in different domains, um, those different domains may require different approach. You may probably agree with me that in terms of medical ethics, um, there are some principles um, like, the, like the four principles of bioethics, but, but when we go to finance, data sharing in finance, or when we go to data sharing in military, these ethical principles may change. I mean, they may change drastically. <laughs> New concepts may be needed, or the weighing of these principles may change. And um, in terms of um, generative AI, we have some other issues, uh, some issues other than domain-specific ethical issues, which are more general, like the generation of scientific knowledge, publication ethics, and it has some... Um, specific problems like authorship, accountability, responsibility, trust in science, infodemics, research ethics, and of course we have data ethics and open science here, and there is the issue of data ownership and control, and multi-center research or transfer, cross-border um, transfer of cross-border transfer of data. And uh, of course we have the we have the set in the middle, which is uh, which represents the ethical issue, issues added by generative AI. So this is the book that we co-authored with my mentor when I was having my PhD in ethics together with uh, Professor Arda. When we wrote this book, we published bo this book, I think, in 2021, and we have a chapter there about we weren't calling it generative AI, then we were calling it artificial general intelligence, something like that. And we had a chapter about that, and, and we had some critics from people saying that, well, it's it's not, uh, we are not sure that we are even going to get there, but, you know, we got there even um, in, the, in the blink of an eye. So, okay, let me just show you this, and then we can have a more interactive dis discussion if you have any questions. So this is the clusters. Uh, domains and innovation specific approaches. In terms of development, we um, address some ethical um, values and concepts like transparency, reliability, integrity, accountability, and fair and equitable access. In terms of policy, we have trust, respect, autonomy, inclusiveness, plurality, and decentralized approach. And in terms of deployment, implementation, and vigilance, we have ethics committees, responsibility and accountability, safety and oversight, human oversight, utility, and fairness and justice. And in the middle, we have the collaboration. And for this, I, I think collaboration is completely an, an, an essential um, concept here because as more data is digitalized, as I showed in my previous initial slides, as more data is digitalized, it is, it is an essential element of you know, going forward in terms of um, technology development and deployment. So for collaboration, we need some kind of a pluralistic approach and we need to put on new lenses to see the issues from each other's side. And when we're trying to do that, we have to um, address to all these um, concepts and make sure that we are understanding the same meaning from these concepts. Or we, we should have the flexibility to rethink these concepts and just align it uh, with the, um, in, in line with the development in the technology. So that's all from my side. I try to keep it um, brief. And um, if you have any questions, and if I happen to know the answers of them, I'm happy to answer. 